The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players' Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. All right, you are in the SWBC Podcast Center. I'm Newey Scruggs, along with Heckma Harrison, Barry Church. Yes, sir. This is the Players' Lounge, and we come to you after the NFL draft, but we have news today as we're here at the start mm-hmm. that an old face is returning to the organization mm-hmm. Ezekiel Elliott was slated to take a physical 10 o'clock I mean 8 o'clock <coughs> excuse me it's now 10 back in the building go your thoughts look um I'm going to say it, it, it wasn't a you know terrible move, in, in my opinion. You know, I think he can bring come in here, and he, you know Z. One thing about Z, you know he's going to be able to pass protect, and yeah. you know he's going to be able to punch the ball in from the, from the five-yard end. Like, he's going to be able to be that guy that can ground and pound. We talked about it on the last episode. We need that back that's going to be able to wear defenses down. Is he the same back that he was years ago? Not at all. But I think what he can do can service this offense. He can pick up, uh, you know, blitzes and pass protection, and he can knock it in from the five-yard end. So, to me, I didn't, you know, I thought it was a it was a solid move. You know, it wasn't a yeah. game changer, but it was a solid move. Um, we'll talk about the draft in a little bit, but, yeah, I think, you know, bringing Zeke on, it's a, it's a solid move. BC, I could not be happier. There it is. I'm happy. I'm happy about this move. Never should have left. That's is facts. what I got to say about it. I mean, um, look, Nui, it got you choked up because <laughs> you get some more water. Uh, because the thing is, is that we talked about this long and hard throughout the season. And I always said, I'm like, look, this is a piece to what we do offensively that the Cowboys are going to miss. And Maybe they made, you know, Tony Pollard, the upside with him, the speed portion, mm-hmm. and maybe being, bringing in a guy like Rico Dowd or some of those other guys, <laughs> you would have been able to mix and match them in. I think the the thing that you missed most about Zeke last season was those tough inside yeah. runs. Yeah. You missed that. You missed that. You, you, you were just talking about five yards in in the red zone. You missed that from there Zeke. It and it was so many times over the course of the season that you were saying, Zeke would have scored right there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Zeke would have picked up that blitz. That's true. You know, all of those things. And, look, man, it, it's sometimes you, you don't miss a good thing until it's gone. And I think for him, I, I can't wait to hear his interview. Like, what was his experience outside of the building uh, going to New England and what what's the feeling for him coming back? I think you may get, for all the rumors and things that people said about Zeke and uh, offseason stuff, I think that's – you're not going to get that, Zeke. Yeah. Uh, I think the guy that you get coming back in the, in the building is going to be focused. Um, and I and let's keep it real. He can help this team. He can. He can help this team. And so you add a piece that knows the offense, that knows a portion of the offense already, and the personnel. Look, it, it's a perfect fit. And look, man, thank for the organization to put egos aside and bring back a player that they know can help them. Yeah. Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have to rely on the immortal it's lip two thoughts. No, 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 no. It's two thoughts. <laughs> oh! First thought God. is... <laughs> you could... If he was... If he'd accepted a larger pay cut last year, could have been him. Yeah, that's true. Okay? Yeah, that's true. You and your agent thought that, you know, you were worth more and you found out quickly that that was not the case. Mm-hmm. So, let's put that there. Uh... The second portion of it is, you look at the draft, they didn't go get anybody. So, now you're here. I I can see the mentality of it because they had so many holes to fill. We knew oh, yeah. there was going to be a hole someplace. So, the organization basically, okay, fine. Look, we, we got another, we got another, so we got, so we got something else sitting yeah. back here. Mm-hmm. We are not going to force anything. I just don't know how much of a difference this is going to make. I'm still the person who remembers all the negativity on uh, as he at, at the end. Yeah, you know he's not this, he's not that. There's a lot. Okay, do we forget that? Uh, that's true. This is 
Heckler, you, you, I don't know if he was born at the time. Uh, Tom Landry goes 3-13 in 1988. Everybody's That's a mad. a year right there. Everybody's mad. The game's passed him by. Well, then Jerry buys a team in 89, and he gets rid of them. It's like, oh, my gosh, what are we doing? You can't do that. Wait a minute. You guys were all saying mm-hmm. it was done. So it's a weird <laughs> kind of deal. You were done with Zeke. Makes too much money. Then he's gone. Now we're missing him. What, oh, gosh. We can't get in for the five-yard line. <laughs> Bring him back. So I, I'm just kind of sitting in this zone of, yeah, there's a place where he can help. How he helps, we'll see. How his mentality comes back. Going to New England, you know, what, mm-hmm. what does he bring back here? I'll be interested. I, I know I always like to say, let it play out. That's why I'm here. Let, let it play out. What does this do for Royce Freeman? Mm. How do they make this running back room work? Uh, Rico, you know, Rico, but uh, yeah, Rico and, and uh, Deuce. Hunter Lipke, Deuce. What, what is it? Yeah. I would say, as you look all around the kind of the, the rooms they have, that's one room right now. Are you confident in the room? No. Okay. Are you no. confident in the right now? No, not right now. And, and my confidence level it stems from do you have the same caliber of a running back that the New York Jets have? Uh, it, you just look around the NFL at the guys that you say, like, these are apex guys in mm-hmm. the NFL. And I, and I don't look at Zeke at this point in his career as that guy. You know that – it's going to diminish as time goes on. It's a lot of miles, a lot of tread on those tires, right? Mm-hmm. I, my only belief is when I, when I looked at last season, there were games where Tony Pollard really didn't give you anything. Uh, in the ground game, and, and you depended a lot on Dak to back up and throw us mm-hmm. out of situations. You needed somebody on a third and four to be able to pick up a first down instead of relying on relying on Dak to make that pass. It takes a lot of the pressure off of him. That's all I'm saying. Now, if it's a running back by committee, and I'm talking about three dudes that can actually get it done, then I'm okay with that. All right. I'm okay with three guys having a culmination of 1,600 yards, 1,700 yards between all three of them. I'll take it. All right. Lipke, give you 300. Uh, break it up. All right. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Lipke, give you me 300. Nah, I pointed at my dog. <laughs> 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 like BC, you like, you like how I'm thinking. Uh, I'm trying to go with your vision. All right. <laughs> I, 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 I will go, I'll go back to Ezekiel Elliott's previous head coach, Bill Belichick. You played against him. Mm-hmm. He's, he's run through a lot of different guys yeah. through the years. Yeah. A man won a Super Bowl with Antoine Smith and J.R. Redman yeah. as running backs. Yeah. So he, he did a mix and match, and they figured out what it is they wanted to do. And this is where you, you go to Mike McCarthy. All right, you got this gumbo here. How do you make it work? And so that's what I'm trying to figure out. But if you are a Cowboy fan and you just go through the years, this is an organization that's you know, been used to a bell cow running back. From yeah. Dwayne Thomas in their first Super Bowl win, <laughs> yeah. who should have won the MVP that game, <laughs> uh, to Tony Dorsett, to Emmitt Smith, to Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, DeMarco. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you're used to seeing a lead dog here. This changing of the guard or how they're going to do this I, I like to see because right now, all I can go by is what I know. And around here, when they've made it go, they've had that one guy mm-hmm. and he's going to do it. So they're going to go a different way. Let's see how they have it a different way. Yeah. And then the, the committee, it can work. The running back committee, it, it can work. We've seen cases of it. The only thing that worries me about, you know, going into this season, if they don't, if defenses don't respect that run game, and we, we've seen it all before. If they don't respect yeah. that ring, they're going to let all that coverage in the back end make everything murky for Dak. And can Dak, you know, get through the waters? Of course he can. But that's a lot of weight you're putting on your quarterback yeah. when you don't have a run game to help, you know, complement that passing attack. And defenses are just going to sit back and wait. Because if they don't respect that run game, it's going to be hard to move the ball through the air consistently for 17 games. Who's your starter? Day one. Zeke. Right, up, right, yeah. off the, right off the bat. I don't see any of these other guys beating Zeke out in the summer. I, I, I don't I don't see it. You know, you, you still have one of those guys that, man, he he still has some swag about himself. He, I mean, and look, that new his New England stint, it wasn't 
It wasn't great by a long shot. Finished with like 600 yards on the ground, but still. He showed flashes. He showed flashes. Yeah, he showed flashes. And those flashes. <laughs> you hear yourself. Hey, man. I can't. Yeah, right the hope we now, just came man. in off the hope you, man. Don't, don't do us like that, man. <laughs> you know? Newly, man. Yeah, you see what he did to Pittsburgh last yeah, year, man. Saw. My guy, he got some juice left. He got a game. Had a game. Got out a game. A game. Not a season. A game. Not a Pro Bowl. Not a, we're talking about a game. Yeah. A game. Yeah. A game. Man, we needed him versus Green Bay. Hey, give me that game versus Green Bay. A lot of, a lot of games you had this year. But so, yeah. so I'm just listening to your, your words. Yeah. I don't, and your words. You know he's going he to write that down in the little book over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I go mean, come you back. understand you how this – this is – we told some hope. Yeah, there is hope. There is hope. You're hoping it can be what it once was. Yeah. Hoping you – Yeah. Is it, are you think they're done adding to that room? You think that's the room going into the season? No injuries, nothing. That could be the room. Ah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I would have to think that the roster construction at a position like that is still still open. But, I mean, as we're just talking here. It remains fluid. When, when the man <laughs> left, no, there wasn't a big. The people had there was there were certain folks who like this. Not what he's done. Didn't you call him fullback? <laughs> fullback. Yeah. So now yeah. you've gone from his last year calling him fullback to now now you you on the hopium. If he could give you five fifty six hundred, now you the ifs. You think he could give you five fifty or six hundred? I, I think so. so. Let's go. Let's go six hundred. With, with Lippy's 300. With <laughs> we <don't. laughs> oh, my goodness. Deuce Vaughn give us 200. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we put this thing together, man. So it's, it's, it's a piece of puzzle. <laughs> In baseball, this is the equivalent of a guy. He's not a starter anymore. Hey, hey man, we're going to bring out the bullpen. So he gives one or two. That's good. Mm. He's not that horse that he used to be. No. So we, we have to know that. No. Ezekiel L is not the horse he used to be. That's true. Man, that's a and lot of lot of carries, man. That's a lot of carries. Two thousand sixty-five carries for Ezekiel Elliott. It's a lot. It's a lot. A lot of it's hits, lot. like man, in boxing. Man. You know, your your body only has so many hits, and so how they use them, how they utilize it, it's, it's got. This is truly a committee now. Yeah. This is truly a committee. Now. And you go back to those seasons, man, where he g- had gutsy performances. And everybody like he's playing with a PCL injury and all of that, and. and, and they never come back to that. You know, they mm-hmm. never come back to this the, the way that he gutted out some of those, had some gutsy performances and still stayed in, you know, wasn't inactive for any of those games. Like, my, my thing is, is that you need a guy like that in that room. Yeah. You, you need a guy like that. And if if they're not done, I mean, they we're, I know we're going to go into the draft and what we didn't do or, <laughs> but in, in the draft, there was obviously some thought process in that that we're going to have to get a veteran at some point. And the ones that were left and the, the, likely, the likelihood of them saying, look, this is a guy that we're familiar with and they just went with that move. Um, ESPN reporting it is a one-year deal with a maximum value of $3 million. All right. For Ezekiel Elliott. Which is, which, is. honestly, this is what was going to happen yeah. in this market for guys like Elliott. We saw Royce Freeman. There's, there's not the the big days of dollar big, them being paid big dollars in the running back position. Mm. That that's gone. So it, it wow. makes economic sense. So it is what it is. Yeah. Um, let's take our first break. Dive into this draft. Mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. know the pick that you liked. I mean, you just, you know, down the list. Down the you list. say, all right. You know what? Here's a guy that I think can help this team okay. in 2024. I know he's Scruggs. Heck, Harrison is here. Barry Church is here. Mm-hmm. Our buddy Danny McCray is uh, out, and uh, he'll be back soon. Wish him well. Um, players Lounge brought to you by the Players we'll Lounge. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out down the road here. We're pending. We're talking to, we're talking to folks right now. And we're talking to some people. There it is. Uh, right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboysvip. 
Smoothie. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or any time you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. There is no I in Dallas. There is no I in heart either. No I in Blue Star or in Lone Star for that matter. And there's no I in how about them Cowboys? Smirnoff knows there's no I in football. Football is a we thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks, home or away, we rally together. We cry together. And we always rally cry together because there's definitely no I in Cowboys fans. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back to the Players' Lounge. The 11th <coughs> annual Reliant Home Run Derby is back at Ryder Field in Frisco on May 1st at 6 p.m. Come see your favorite Dallas Cowboy player swing for the fences to raise money for the Salvation Army. Admission and parking are free. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash ReliantHRD to learn more. See you there. Thank you, Heckma Harrison. I'm Newey Scruggs. Along with Barry Church, the Sir. Players' Lounge. Danny McCray with the night uh, day off. So, we spent the first segment diving into Ezekiel Elliott yes. coming back to the mm-hmm. team. Heck, when things come game one, Ezekiel Elliott is the starting running back for this team. I do. The draft was just held here. We saw first round pick Tyler Guyton Friday. I was at the press conference. His family came here. And guys, let me just make sure I, I, I preface and say this. I don't know if I've seen another first round pick come in here with so much gratitude with their family, just, you know, the cowboy fans. Mm-hmm. This 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 gentleman was thoroughly happy to be here. I knew Micah wanted to come here. We know that. But mm-hmm. just you could just see that they were just overwhelmed with joy. That's what's up. That was really fun to see. Wait till 2030 when they call Heckman's name. Boy, he talked about talk- gratitude. <laughs> yeah. We going to uh, roll. We going to bear crawl into the building. <laughs> okay, we going to bear crawl. Uh, <laughs> are you going to be like uh, Chris? Chris was when Deuce was drafted. Tears. tears everybody, everybody, what? Everybody, everybody, you know, oh, man. We going to hang glide to the field back in the What you talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> you want to come work with Dad? <laughs> All of that. Can, you know, on podcast, can, can, can you join? Can you sit in the podcast today? Yeah, no, man. It's, uh, you know, I, I love that with especially the bus ride when you show them get out the plane mm-hmm. and then the bus ride over these guys see their see their faces on the digital screen. I mean, it's it's obviously it it has to be a dream come true for them and, and Tyler Guy and he's someone that we got well for me I got an opportunity to see him all year but because OU OU games and Brett Venables was linebacker Kansas State know him well good friend of mine. Um, Man, just got a got an opportunity to see this big fella, and, and now seeing thinking about him next to Tyler, what Tyler and Tyler? There's some big guys on the left side of that offensive <laughs> line that I think you know you know Cowboy fans should be excited. I know there's some hesitation because of you know him being a, mm-hmm. being the left tackle, and obviously with with, with Tyron uh, now gone. It, look. I think they have to give this guy Guyton is, is going to be a pleasant surprise for a lot of people. His great feet, long arms, mm-hmm. and everything that you need from your left tackle. Is there going to be a learning curve? Heck yeah, there he is. Yeah. Yeah, because the speed is a lot different. And you get a chance. But the thing is, you get a chance to go up against Michael Parsons every day in practice mm-hmm. and guys like Tank Lawrence. So, hey, the learning curve will be quick for, for him. 
No, I, I love the pick. I love the pick. You know, we talked about, you know, all the holes that this team has going into this draft. And I think they feel one, especially with this guy, Tyler Guyton, right now. A big dude. I'm talking about 6'7". This dude is big massive. Guy. And But I, what I like most about him is his basketball background. So he has, like you said, those good feet. He's athletic ability because he's going to have to deal with a lot of speed coming off of that edge. So I love the pick right there. They got that offensive line hopefully solidified, and we'll see it going forward. But I love that first-round pick. I mean, we needed it especially in the trenches on the offensive side. I think that they did good with the first rounder, man. Yeah. And he uh, caught a touchdown pass from Andy Dalton when he was at TCU. So, oh, so hey, to, you know, run a play <laughs> out there. There you go. There it is. They double a CD. Just go ahead. Throw, 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 hit, him, hit him with a bullet. CD going so, to uh, <clears throat> so great, great to meet the Guyton family and to see just exci- how excited they were. I, I really enjoyed that. So uh, who, when you look at this draft, was your favorite pick of what the Cowboys did? Got it, sir. Okay, so I, I, I'm still trying to figure out the 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 round number three. That's the round three pick from Notre Dame. Would you please pronounce this name for me? <laughs> I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you I got it, but I think Liafo. Liafo. Okay. So here's Liafo. the deal. And Maris Liafo. Th- this this guy is Puka, Puka's cousin. Puka's cousin. Puka Nakua's cousin. I like him already. All right, Jordan Brand deal on the table coming for this mm, fellow. Um, but as far as we knew what we needed, we knew, and I'm just, just channeling my inner Danny McRae here uh, because that was exactly what he was asking for mm-hmm. is, a, is a linebacker. And when you look at a guy like him and what he can do as far as applying pressure from the blitz, we needed a guy like that to also uh, – to be able to blitz the passer, but also a guy that's good in space. And what I saw from him in Notre Dame is he's also good in space. That's what you're gonna need. Yeah, and that's again, that's a, with the combination of what Coach Zimmer is going to bring to this defense and the weapons that he already has. You needed a guy like that. I think last year you were looking at our linebackers and you saw that was one of the major deficiencies: the way that they worked in pass coverage and working in space. What where I have questions about sometimes is you know how. Taking on blocks. Yeah. You know, we saw – and you don't want to see these guys down after down after down take on guards and tackles, but just see if he, he's that physical at the line of scrimmage. So, you know, I, I really appreciate the pick. Um, I think he's going to work well in this defense and really want to see how he works and combines with guys like Michael Parsons. Yeah, you know, I, I got to go with my MAC representative as well, Western Michigan guy right here, Marshawn Nealon. Yeah. And, you know, off the edge, they say he's, you know, twitchy, he's, fl- he's fast off the edge, can get after the quarterback. Um, he, he's a, he's a raw talent, though. He, he's a raw talent, though, and hopefully he can, you know, with guys like Parsons and, and Lawrence around him, they can help perfect his game. But I think you're going to definitely need those depth pieces, especially with, you know, Armstrong out of here now. You yeah. got um, Fowler was gone out of yes. here now. That, that pass rush was huge for Dan Quinn last year because he was able to just, you know, rotate those guys guys in and they were fresh so this year you're going to add a little bit of depth there and hopefully if he's able to come along well then you can get that that speed package where you can kick Demarcus Lawrence on the inside you can have Parsons and him on the outside as well and you can get after the pass rusher that way would I have liked to see more of a big time space eater in that in that pick right there to to basically solidify the interior part of our defense yes but this right here is to me is a good depth piece and hopefully he can come along and uh, provide dividends for this defensive line Cooper BB. Love it. Okay. The offensive lineman out of Kansas State. And I know a lot of people, and I had talked about Zach Frazier from, from uh, Western Virginia. West, yeah, West, West Virginia. Virginia. <clears throat> and I believe if you check the, the, the draft guide there, BB was rated higher than Frazier. So I made a phone call up to Kansas State this morning, and I was told one of the best people on the team – Going to be involved in your community events. Okay. Uh, they they put him all around the offensive line when he was there. Uh, eight starts at right tackle in 2020, 13 starts at left tackle in 2021. Then they moved him inside. And unanimous All-American. It's tough to do. It's tough to do. Mm-hmm. And to me, what's even more impressive is he did it in the Big 12. Because there are a lot of people that, when they're doing these kinds of things, they put more emphasis on the SEC and what's yeah. going on over there. So I think that and this, and people just think, oh, it's the Big 12, it's a passing league, and all they do is throw the ball here. Um, so that uh, he was also a first team All American in 2022, the Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year, 2022 and 2023, three time first team All Big 12. I look at that and I go back to when Jimmy was drafting players and also when Bill Parcells is around here. Go get me some proven winners. Yeah. 
Go get me some people that are doing it at a high level. Gilbrandt, the late Gilbrandt used to say, Nui, if they're not doing it there, they're not going to come up here and start doing it. It's true. So when I look at Cooper BB, who they talked about putting at center, this guy's big. Arms aren't the longest, but you know what? He can get in there in the phone booth and mix it up with you. I'm excited about that because I just truly believe they've got to help maintain that middle. And so now I'm thinking, here's a bigger, thicker guy than Biotis. Mm-hmm. So you have fun trying to figure out how you're going to get through BB, Zach Martin, Tyler Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be tough. Yeah. Okay. Good, good luck. Good, good luck right there. That's gonna be tough. So if you th- if you're trying to attack, you well, well, we'll have to go after the Cowboy tackles, because that interior line is gonna be be stout. Be stout. Yeah. And <laughs> and then let me add, finish this. Then now your run game can be a little bit better. Yeah. So you can get the third and one, third and two. Yeah. And, and the one thing that I <clears throat> particularly love about BB is he has some nasty. To him. Mm-hmm. He has some nasty to him. And they watch the highlights and you just watch this dude. He is finishing blocks. And that's the only thing, like when I looked at Guyton, and a lot of not just him, uh, a ton of offensive linemen, I always have this critique. They don't finish blocks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, latch on and to the Gatorade buckets, you know, or fin- and it's, I think it's the RPO. It, don't even get me started. Anyway, <laughs> I, it, whatever. You know, I just, I like his level of nasty. And, and, and I think you needed that. You need that with the guys that you have. Um, and man, that's a, that's a great depth piece. And, and also just understanding from the Dallas Cowboys, how, you know, satis- not, I don't want to use the word satisfied, but where they feel like they are already uh, with the guys up front, with Brock Hoffman and, and, and those guys. So, you know, this, having, having him having that piece, he's going to have to compete. He's, he's going to have competition definitely Hoffman's coming into it. no slouch. In exactly. He, he no slouch. Look, I look at Cooper Beebe as second-round talent that ended up in the third round. I, I just really, really am excited about this young man. Because the Cowboys need somebody else to fight in the phone booth. They got to. And <clears throat> they've won 12 games three years in a row, and they've struggled in the playoffs. They haven't been able to just get out there and establish a run game. Other teams have established it against them, but they have yeah. not. Mm-hmm. And so, to me, that's what I'm looking for here. Get this middle solidified right here. Okay. Start, you know, start there. Then you go out. Guyton, it's going to be an interesting thing. So for me, and we talked about this before, you need to get some people to walk in here and help you right away. Think about, I'm not sure what Guyton just yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating if they can stay healthy, that BB and Guyton are guys that are playing day one. day one. That's what you've needed to get out of this draft for sure and help your offensive line. Yeah, because they got this team, they have to be able to punch people in the mouth. You know, instead of, you know, taking that first punch and saying, all right, now we got to re- retaliate, they got to be able from from day one, from jump one, be able to establish this ground game, establish some type of dominance to where they can go out there and punch these guys in the mouth instead of, you know, waiting around to get hit. I mean, that's what happens in each of the last maybe three playoff losses. Green Bay came in here, punched them in the mouth. San Francisco twice, back to back, punched them in the mouth. They've got to get some nasty to them, and hopefully BB and all these other guys can go in there and, as a group in that offensive lineman and, and start serving out some, you know, some beatdowns to these other teams. And you saw that with, with against teams in your own division, Philadelphia. Yeah. Also, uh, they come in and they play nasty, and <laughs> they are all over you. Picking up you, as soon as you said it, my mind goes to just okay. Who are you facing? You know, you're trying to win your division. We know Philadelphia has invested in their defensive line. Right. Uh, we know the Giants have some good defensive mm-hmm. line. Uh, Dan Quinn. We know Dan Quinn, whose his background is defensive line. He's going to be working in that area, and they still have some players there too. Mm-hmm. So that's the exciting thing when I think about Cooper Beebe being in there along with Tyler Smith and Zach Martin. Is that they're going to make it hard? And if you can keep that pocket clean for Dak, that people just can't run up in there like that. Yeah. That's going to help him. And then, like I said, third one, whatever, inside the five, you got a chance. Now, my, my question, if you guys were paying – you guys, of course, you're paying, paying attention to the 244th pick, uh, Justin Rogers, the defensive tackle out of Auburn. 6'3", uh, 246 pounds. Wait, wait, what? what? Yeah, seventh-round pick. <laughs> seventh. I don't, don't even say that name. Uh, don't don't go there. Don't go there. I can't even now. I can't even say his name on the show. Come on now. Don't go there, man. But, that's, that's but look, 
you have a guy, obviously he has his shortcomings as well as, as a defensive tackle, but you get a guy, I think, that you were asking for. You wanted it probably talent-wise in, the, in you know, rounds one through okay. four. Uh, but you end up getting some of that answered in the seventh round with your, you know, with your final pick with Justin Rogers. I mean, I'm not asking him to rush the passer. I'm asking him to be a space eater. I'm asking this guy to take on blocks. And coming out of the SEC, seeing the way that he performed, I mean, look, he's maybe not the most athletic guy. I don't need him to be the most athletic guy. As a matter of fact, I need him to gain 20 more pounds. Be immovable. That's it. <laughs> you no, know, I need a, 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 a cement, a guy, a bucket full of cement guy. <laughs> That's what I need. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought you were going to say Jay Ratliff. That's what I no. thought. That's what, That's what I was saying. I'm like, hold on. You about to say <laughs> well, Auburn, <laughs> Auburn, seventh round pick. Was, you know, like, hold you know, on. Jay you know what? I hate that I didn't come up with that. <laughs> yeah, like, what? <laughs> because that, that mean, is a lightning in the bottle type was, of thing. I mean, we, just ne- we hardly ever see somebody become a Pro Bowl defensive player, you know, stalwart in the middle like I Jay Ramsey. I'm Come mad at myself. <laughs> I th- that's where I thought you were it going with it, huh? <laughs> see? Yeah, I wasn't. I thought you were talking about Mozzie. Don't say Mozzie's name. <laughs> I, I, won't. I won't. I thought you were saying. That's exactly what I thought you were saying, but no. I didn't even put that together. Seventh round pick as well. All Amazing. Right. <laughs> Draft grades. We'll do that when we come back right here on the Players Lounge. <laughs> DallasCowboys.com radio. Oh. Uh. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or anytime you want a munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at Get Jack Black dot com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip that's get jackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip i'm dak prescott quarterback of the dallas cowboys and they snap it to prescott who looks right it's not there he escapes left he'll run for a first down just like football when it comes to crypto it's important to have a team you can trust with blockchain.com i know i'm in good hands since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back to the Players' Lounge. Head to Miller Lighthouse at AT&T Stadium for the Dallas Cowboys Tacos and Tunes Festival presented by Miller Lite on Saturday, May 4th from 3 to 7 p.m. Enjoy a variety of tacos from regions across Mexico and food truck fare while you sip on cold drinks and listen to live music. Admission and parking are free. Visit attstadium.com slash tacos and tunes for more information. See you there. Heck, my Harrison, appreciate you. Danny McCray's out today. Barry Church, the Toledo Rocket, is here. I'm Newey Scruggs. Congratulations on uh, your right. first rounder. Yeah, man. First rounder. We'll yeah, see what man. he can do out there. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Twice a year, too. Mm-hmm. Twice a year. So mm-hmm. He's a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. So Quignon Mitchell. Well, there you go. Congratulations to him. You want to do draft grades. So, mm. all right, go ahead. <clears throat> draft grade for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to give it a solid B. 
Solid I'm going to give it a solid B. Not a B minus, not a B plus, but I'm going to give it a solid B. You know, I think they definitely filled the holes on the offensive line that they needed. Um, I think they got either a couple of day one starters or at the very worst, great depth pieces on that offensive line to go ahead and protect your almost, you know, about to be $60 million quarterback soon. Yeah. So you got to be able to protect him up there. Um, the reason, you know, I didn't go any higher than that, because they, they didn't grab it back, man. They, they, they didn't grab it back. You got Ezekiel Elliott. We talked about that in the first segment. But to me, I, I thought you could have got a great depth piece you know, fourth, fifth round in there that could come in there. And and not saying he's going to be, you know, Ezekiel Elliott in 2016, but, yeah. you know, he could have made that room a lot better. And, you know, he had an abundance of running backs in the draft to choose from. You know, I figured they would go late in the later rounds and grab one, but they did not. But they did feel the need against the or in the offensive line and on the defensive line as well. So, for me, I give him a solid B. Look, here, when I when – I, I said it before. I said offensive line first, defensive line second, and then running back third. I thought that would be the order in which we went mm -hmm. uh, on it. Once it got to those third rounds and we didn't go that way and you saw the running backs that had already dropped off the board, everyone after that would have would have been maybe a reach yeah. considering, you know, scheme, fit, size, all of those things. And so I don't know particularly the, the secret hasn't come out if they went you know, BPA on the board, but I felt like they addressed their needs. Yeah. Pers they, they addressed their needs. They addressed the depth pieces that they needed. Even the, you know, the depth at, at DB. We hadn't talked, you know, they brought in some some extra help there uh, as well. I just, look, I'm going A minus. Okay. And the reason I'm saying A minus is instead of A plus is kind of for the same reason yeah. that you, you didn't go out there and, and get, uh, you didn't get the running back, but I felt like you, you were solid in every other area. Yeah. I felt like you were solid. I felt like you got guys that are going to be able, that we hope are guys that are right off the bus that could come uh, and help you. And it's yet to be seen, but you know, when you talk, when you listen to Will McClay talk about these, about these guys that they drafted, you realize that they obviously do all of their due diligence and mm -hmm. research on these guys, and they know that they fit the scheme that they're going to play next season. So, look, I'm, I, I always, and Will McClay, I trust. Let me just yeah. say that, all right? I, I trust, and, and, you know, you bring in a guy like Deron Bland, and you're like, man, who is Deron, man? Yeah, is nah, yeah. You know, <laughs> this guy, you know, small school, we don't think that he can, how can he compete on this level? Oh, he just goes out and lead the NFL in interceptions. Mm -hmm. So, look, I think I always put that in the back of my mind when I see these guys that are from maybe a smaller school, the, the wide receiver from a small school that's coming in, big kid, yeah. ran a 4-4, but I'm just saying, you know that Will McClay, Stephen Jones, they did their research on these guys, and so I felt like it was a, it was a solid draft. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, I hate giving it a grade. I, I do, and I, I simply say this from the standpoint: some of these guys, I really have to dive in more to, to mm -hmm. okay, yeah. well, and, and then love to know. Give me your vision for these guys, and they talked a little bit about it at the draft table. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to do. It's like Simon. yeah, everybody yeah. good on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. What a great class of kids. Uh, I did need to see some p potential walk-in starters and some p some guys that can and not walking in here like you talk about a kneeling, somebody who can can play some special teams and work. I think they did a good job when it came to taking some of these linebackers and defenders because of the new special teams rule. I don't think people talk about that enough. Right. It's going to play a very key part mm -hmm. in how you build your football team, and I don't think Cowboy fans really understand how bad and bare the linebacker spot got last yeah. year. Yeah, dude. They had so many holes, so I give grace about the running back position because I'm thinking to myself, so if I have to go into free agency, Where's a place where I can go and say, you know what? It may not be perfect, but I can make this work. It's Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. You knew once the draft happened, and it's not just the Cowboys, a whole bunch of teams are just trying to find some bargains here and there. There you go. I can, I can live with that. I can live with that because the backs that I liked, they were gone. And as they were, like, take a Cooper Beebe. Hey, you, you can't take a running back. You, you needed this guy. Yeah. You needed a starting center. You passed on him in round two, passed on him in round one. Couldn't you, you had to, you had to fix it. So I give them grace there. You look at a guy like Nealon, they're thinking down the road, and you have to start to Tank Lawrence is not going to be here forever. Mm -mm. No. You're going to have to start to think, where do we go? Sam Williams, you're hoping Sam Williams steps into being more this year. So I understand the mentality of what they were trying to do. So if I have to give you something, I'd give it a B. Okay. 
it has to be better than last year's. Got to be. That's a for so sure, for you, sure. You know, this 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 group, <laughs> you you gonna play Jesus because you dying for last year's sins right. of, of the dudes who didn't get stuff done. Okay, so we need you to come in here and be extraordinary, great. Lord you know? forgive him. man. They got they gotta get done. It's because last year, I mean. Will McClay's track record, you know, you got to trust in him because he, yeah. you know, he's he's amazing when it comes to this. But last year, I mean, who but, who stood out in last year? Like, who, what is this? Brother, ugh. Yeah. What is this? It's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's a thing. So that's what I'm like, man. We need, we need to get some people that can come in here and help you right away because last year's class was not good. And you're looking at things. I mean, right now, okay, you think about last year's class. Oh my God. Mozzie Smith, we don't know. No. We, we don't know. Uh, Luke Schoonmaker. He's not going to be your number one tight end because that's Jake Ferguson. Jake and then Fire. people say, you you got to block better. So, you know, got to see where his growth spurt is. Your third round pick has never started a game or played in a game before. Uh, in uh, No overstreet because he got hurt. Uh, Junior Fajoko, how does he fit? Your fourth rounder, how does he fit in this scheme for Mike Zimmer? Mike Zimmer. Because that was a Dan Quinn pick. Like you know, Dan Quinn had a vision for him. Does Mike have that same vision? Things like that that we're trying to figure out and find out from last year's class of guys. It's a problem. Deuce Vaughn. What is expected of Deuce Vaughn in year number two? Mm. He's in that running back room. So, so what? What, what do what you? What do, do you see? What do you? Do? So that that for me, that's stuff that I, I look at. Um, free agent wise here. Um, a lot of Chris Beam gave us a note here. Just a lot of the signings, uh, like. Missouri running back Nathan Pete, uh, Northwestern receiver Cam Johnson, you know, Corey Crooms, wide receiver out of Minnesota, Alec Holler, tight end from Central Florida. So a lot of names here, names you don't necessarily know off the top of the head unless you're like a fan of the team because it's from you know South Dakota, you know, East Carolina, and Nevada. So to me, I just look at it this way. We know there's going to be one or two guys that make this football team. Off that undrafted list. Well, happens every year. Terrence Steele is just there. Barry Church is yep. another example. So Great, the Cowboys that. are going to give you an opportunity to make the football team, which I, I think is a pretty good, cool thing because you know it's just not just a window dressing. It's not, they're really looking to give people opportunity. Yeah, I, and, and, and great point, man. Um, I, I think my thoughts of this weekend has been in that wide receiver room also, just trying to figure out who's going to be the number two with with CD, who's going to emerge from that room? Uh, Jalen Tober changed his number to number one. Did you see that? I did not. Yeah, it's number one. He changed it to one. Number okay. one is number one now. Okay. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. All right. All right. Yeah. So I mean, you still have Brandon Cooks. You, Jalen Tober is now your number three. Um, I don't know if that's enough. I, I don't. I don't know if that's enough. Um, CD. CD's con and, and even with that. You know, there's there's CD contract still on the table. So much, man, on the horizon still unsettled for the Cowboys after the draft. And none of those other issues have gone away. We, we still have it. And I, I just feel like as as days go by, CD's contract goes up and up and up, as oh. you see. <laughs> as you see some of these other guys get signed. Man. But you're going to need a bona fide number two uh, receiver. Brandon Cook's. Um, he, he didn't solidify that role to me. I just felt like he was you know, not a one-trick pony, but he was, he was a deep-threat guy uh, for the Cowboys. You need more than that. And I don't know, uh, Jalen Tolbert hasn't proven to me time and time he can be consistent yeah. um, at that. So I want that's what I want to see. And that's why I'm so excited about this summer and these OTAs and see the way that guys are developing. But we there's still uh, some pieces and some things that I, I want to see the Cowboys address, whether, whether it be in free agency or a guy that's currently on the roster taking the reins. They still the team to beat? Cowboys still the, still the team to beat in the division? And to further notice. All right. <laughs> until, until further notice, I know it's, we gonna make bets gonna be made. You already know, you know? <laughs> bets gonna be made. I'll tell you, I'm not betting. Yeah, I know it. Daniel Jones. <laughs> That's why I learned my lesson. The <laughs> Cowboys are. We've never seen them have three seasons in a row of twelve wins. Yeah. I mean, four. Remember, seen four. four. They've had three. To have four would be. You know, that's that's a challenge. I mean, that's that's when you're talking about the uh, the Brady New England type yeah. teams. That's when you talk about the Montana 49ers type teams, and that's that's a challenge. So so we'll see. You know, 10, 11 win may win you the division. It could it end could, up winning the division. Could, if, if everyone can improve, um, they just start knocking slobber knocking each other out. We'll see. Yeah. 
We'll see. But the regression to the mean, because it's the league is designed this way. Yeah. The league is designed that, okay, along the way, we're going to make your schedule harder. You're going to have to face tougher teams. They don't want you to stay on top, yeah. which is why what you see from Kansas City has been impressive, which you saw out of Bill Belichick's run up there in New England. It also helped that these guys play the booty division. Hey. I West digress. <laughs> it, is it, is. it is but what you, it is. But you still have to win it. Yeah, yeah. You still have to win it. And this is this division is not that. This is a very competitive mm -hmm. competitive division. So there's changes that have happened at, at, at uh, all the teams here. So this is why we talk about it. This is why we enjoy it, and we'll see where it goes. The Cowboys have work. We'll see how they keep putting it together. Some th some teams did some interesting things on draft night, man, and and it was it always makes you say, "Wow, I'm glad that's not us." You know, mm -hmm. Atlanta that was interesting. That was very uh, interesting what Atlanta did. Uh, Minnesota with JJ Mc and, and I don't know JJ McCarthy gets a bad rap from a lot of of draft analysts, uh, but what they did at ten, I think everyone's like, "What's what's that pick?" So, look, it's gonna trading we're gonna, up, trading up, mm -hmm. yes, trading up. That mm -hmm. somebody was gonna. But they needed a quarterback. They absolutely they needed. They needed yes, they need a quarterback. So, so they needed a quarterback. To me, that that I understood it. Uh, Kevin McC Kevin O'Connell and did that to fit to me. I, I understood that. I was never a fan of Kirk Cousins signing with Atlanta. I was never a fan of that. Thirty six coming off an Achilles. Achilles yeah. yeah. You know, this guy walking up with ninety million. What, what are we doing here? Yeah. I, I never got that. So. Penix to me wasn't crazy. It's just crazy when you give a guy ninety million, where you could have put resources and gone a whole different yeah. area yeah, in other ways. Mm -hmm. And you'll, by the way, the same organization that put out a press release the year before saying we're not pursuing Lamar Jackson. Like, I don't get this. I don't get mm. this collusion. Mm. I just hundred <laughs> percent. And for all the people that are like saying, "Oh, it's crazy," you got Kirk. Cousins. How long do you have him? Yeah, I am not sold on Kirk Cousins. Finishing this contract healthy. Health, yeah. I'm, I'm just not. And that's the one thing that I thought about when they took Penix. I was like, man, there's got to be something up with that. With because that, yeah. maybe there's something in the contract that they were saying, like, look, get him in here, sign him, whatever. But there's some fine, small writing that may be in there about that whole Achilles injury. I don't know. I just thought that that was different. And there were a ton of teams that, done th that did things on draft night that I said, that – that's interesting. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. Whether they got better, you know, hey, Jaden Daniels goes to, to to the commanders. That'll be interesting. That will be interesting. Will I mean, interesting. I look forward to running yeah. into him. Pause. The, uh, the <laughs> NFC East is oh. always entertaining. Always entertaining. It hey, is. Barry Church, man. Good to see you. Good to see you Thank as well. Harrison. What's up? Good to see you. I'm Newey Scruggs for Chris Bean. Jazz, Josh, Bill, everybody who's a part of this. We appreciate you watching Players Line right here on DallasCowboys.com Radio. You better, D-Mac. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?